And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a game provided to me for review by the Board Game Exchange. Uh, this game is going to be Upon a Salty Ocean. You'll see I don't have the box, that's because they ship them without the boxes uh, when you rent them, but this is a game that is going to be a two to five player game, I believe, sorry, two to four player game. Uh, and it's going to be an action selection game where you have to pay your points, which are also your money, in order to take actions. And the more actions you take, the more points you have to pay. Uh, even into the negatives where you start owing money. The game is around, or, uh, kind of focused around fishing, uh, converting salt and using that salt to make fish or to catch and salt fish in order to sell that fish to the market. Uh, and whoever does this best while also investing in the town that you're shipping around is going to be the winner. So real quick, why don't we take a look at how this plays. Uh, we'll look at the components and then we'll come back here and get my final opinions on Upon a Salty Ocean. So here you can see the setup for Upon a Salty Ocean. Uh, now this is a action taking game where players are gonna take actions in sequence and most of the game is going to revolve around this little track down here with some building being done over this area and some fishing being done here. The game takes place over five turns represented by these five little tokens here which are going to describe the effects for the turn. Uh, at the beginning of the game you're gonna flip one of these up and it's going to tell you what happens. It's going to adjust the market and lay out the weather for the turn. So in this case, Salt is going to go up by two in the market. Uh, cod or herring, and herring or cod, uh, doesn't matter. Purple and pink are going to go up by one and down by one, respectively, in the market. Uh, also, the weather is calm, which has no effect, so there's no point in me covering it right now. But we would adjust the market, so up two for salt, up one for purple, down one for pink. We would also know the next turn's potential effects. So in this case, Salt is going to go up, purple is going to go nowhere, and pink is going to go up by three, so pink is good next turn. In addition, it's going to be a bad fishing season, denoted by this bas basket over here, uh, which means when you fish, you're going to lose some salt. Now, each player starts with one boat, indicated by these little boat markers out here, and three salt on that boat, uh, indicated by these little cubes. And salt will be turned into fish when you go fishing because you're salting the fish you catch. In addition, each player starts with some money. The further forward you are in turn order, the less money you start with. And money is going to be used to take actions. Now, as I said, there are four potential actions all down here. And when you take an action, you are going to take that action and then move the appropriate cube up in its spot, making that action more expensive for the next player to take it. So the first action, let's say yellow takes a build action, it costs them nothing, and they can build a building. And these buildings are all going to do different things. So we have, for example, the lighthouse here, which will let you fix your boat on a turn when it gets damaged at the end of the turn if you've built here. Uh, and basically it's going to cost some money, you'll fix your boat, it'll be all better, and you can hold stuff because as your boat gets damaged, you can hold less. The saline track here, when you go up, is going to let you produce more saline or salt each turn. And you'll be able to put that in your depot, which is down here, can hold up to six pieces, but if you move up, you produce seven. And if you can, can't hold seven, you're going to lose some. At the end of each turn, you'll produce that salt, which you'll want to use to fish, get more fish, sell it to the market. Notre Dame here is simply going to be a money generator. You'll put one of your tokens on here, and each time you build, you'll move up, eventually getting down to the further ones, which give you 70 points at the end of the game, if you get all the way there. The spot up here is going to make you safe from pirates and give you points at the end of the game. This one here simply gives you points at the end of the game. The bank is going to let you keep extra money. So if at some point you go over 40 money and you're at 40 money at the end of the turn and you don't own a bank, you're going to lose anything over 40. If you go over 80 and you don't own both parts of the bank, you will lose everything down to 80. So if you own one part, you can go over 40, but not over 80. In addition, it provides some interest at the end of the turn. The building next to that is going to let you take an extra action if you've built it for an additional cost on your turns. Uh, and all these buildings do various different things, but the most important ones are really the saline, producing more salt, and the depot, allowing you to hold that salt on your player mat in order to transfer it to your boats. The final two that are of pretty high importance are going to be these two boat building areas here. Both of them have to be built by at least one player in order to build more boats, and each player has three potential boats, uh, two of which hold four things and one of which holds six. In order to build them, you have to have at least one person having built each of these buildings. And when you go there to build the building, let's say yellow were to go, and they wanted to build their second boat, they would have to pay $3 to each of these players because the boat costs $6, 3 to red and 3 to green. So let's say it was yellow, they spent their six money to go down to four, and three of it would go to red and green. If, for example, green went to build here, they wouldn't have to pay half of it. 
and they would only pay the three to red. But if green owned stock in both, they wouldn't have to pay anything for any of their boats. So the first action, build something, simply lets you put one of your cubes out here or advance one of your cubes on the ones that already have cubes there. The second action is going to be navigation, and navigation is simply going out to, shit, or to sea or moving back from sea. If the weather is bad, you could take damage. If there's a storm, you would take damage to your ship, lose capacity on it, or if there are pirates, the first person to go out would take damage to their ship. When you go out, you're going to convert all of the salt on your map to one of the two fish. So for example, I could convert all of my salt to pink, and they would become pink fish, which I can then sell later to the market using a market action. And I would have to sail back in order to do that, taking another action. And remember, as you're taking these, you're moving down in money. Uh, now, as you move down in money, there's a potential that you're going to go negative. And if you do go negative, the action costs you one more than what it's supposed to. So say I was already negative with yellow, and I decided to take an action that costs two. It would actually cost me three, because I take one extra. In addition, if you're still negative at the end of the turn, you're going to take an extra loss in terms of money. So it's kind of an interest you have to pay. The third action is going to be the port action, and this gives you two options. You can either build a boat if both of these buildings have been built, or you can move things between your, uh, your depot here and your boat. So for example, if I had salt I wanted to move onto my boat, I could move it in here. And if I had fish I wanted to move off of my boat, I could move it, move it into the depot. And this can hold as much as the depot track says it can. So right now six, but you can up that during the game in order to hold more salt, more fish, uh, and trying to sell things at the appropriate time. The last action is a market action, and that allows you to either buy or sell from the market. Now you'll see that these things are going to fluctuate up and down based on the turn, but they're also going to fluctuate based on how you sell things. When you go, you can sell all of one type of thing you have, either salt or purple or pink. Uh, so when you sell salt right now, the value would be two. And based on how many salt you sell, the value is going to go down. It goes down one, one spot for each part of eight that you sell. So if you sell seven, it will go down once, but if you sell nine, it would go down twice in value and it would be one for the next person to sell. So if I were to sell eight salt, I would get $16 and it would go down one spot, still $2 for the next person to sell. Same thing works for the purple and pink fish. If you want to buy something, you simply pay the market price and can buy as much of it as you want, but you have to have somewhere to store it. The game goes on uh, with players using their money to buy things, earning more money by selling fish, getting fish, going out here with their salt, bringing fish back in order to sell it, uh, until everybody passes in a turn. Uh, basically, you can pass, then you can come back in uh, at any point. Simply, you decide you don't want to take an action. You pass, it goes back around, comes back to you, you can go again. Uh, but it, when everybody passes, nobody wants to take any more actions, it goes to the next turn. Uh, you're going to flip up the next event thing. You're going to look at what the events are for that year, adjust the market, and continue on uh, with your game, trying to figure out how to best make money. All of the actions will reset to zero, so they all become cheap again. Eventually, they get all the way up to 10 on a turn and people don't want to pay that anymore so they start passing. Uh, it goes back down to zero and you can take more actions. You're going to keep doing this through five turns, flipping these up uh, so you always know one turn in advance what the weather will be. So for example, the next turn after the second turn would be bad weather. And any boat that goes out to sea during the bad weather is going to take a damage, marking it on their map with one of their own cubes. Uh, so if green went out, now their boat can only hold three, three things, which is fine right now, they only have three things, but if they wanted to hold more, they'd have to fix it later. You're going to go through five turns in this manner, and at the end of the game, whoever has the most points, by best building these buildings, by best fishing, uh, and by best really investing in this Notre Dame track, is going to be the winner. And there you have it, that is Upon a Salty Ocean. Uh, this is a game that's a little bit unique insofar as going negative never really seems to be all that detrimental to you in the game. And as a matter of fact, several players go all the way to negative 22 uh, and then rebound back to win the game. And I've seen it happen in both, uh, well, two different games that I've played. Um, a player meant all the way negative and they got all the way back and won the game. And a lot of the time, players think that this is because of the Notre Dame Cathedral invest in action where you can get 70 points at the end of the game just by putting a lot of points into that. And while that's a very powerful part of the game, I don't think it's misbalanced because you can also get a lot of points from fishing appropriately. So if you kind of dedicate one way or the other, you can balance it out. Now you can't let one player have all of Notre Dame or else you're going to have a problem, but if you kind of invest a little bit, you can counteract a full investment into that cathedral. Uh, the game plays pretty quickly. It's not hard to learn. There's not that much going on, uh, but it can be a little confusing with all of the buildings that are available in the village. Uh, but 
It's a little deceptive, the going negative thing. You never know quite how well you're doing. Um, it's not a very clear game in terms of who's going to win, which can be nice if you like that, but can also be frustrating if you don't. Uh, so if this sounds interesting to you, you can check it out uh, either from your local store or an online store or the board game exchange. See if you like it. That is Upon a Salty Ocean. To try this game and over 800 others before you buy them, visit BoardGameExchange.com. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. What?